Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel, Hazel and Arca Design. I am so glad that you're here, and I hope that while you're here, you choose to subscribe if you haven't already done so. That uh, makes YouTube and me very happy, but it also is sort of a, a confidence booster in the sense that, okay, I'm on the right track. I'm doing things that you want to see. Um, a while back, I asked you whether or not you wanted to see my blush journal in a start to finish type of series. And the people that voted said, yes, please. So it's high time that I showed you um, something more. Now, um, <laughs> much those of you who live through my tree journal experience will not be at all surprised to find that I have much more here than could ever possibly fit in a journal, a journal. So don't be surprised if we end up with several journals. <coughs> now, um, you may have seen the video where I got a spectacular, totally unexpected, very generous, um, happy mail from Kim Newberg. And essentially, I've put it all in this uh, photo box, and I'm keeping it front and center here because we're going to dig through it in a minute. So, I am at my... <coughs> I used to say Studio B when I would do my book videos, what's in my bookcase videos, in the bedroom. But uh, this is just a secondary spot here in my office. And I don't have all my tools here, so this is going to be more talking and showing than actual doing. And I hope that's all right with you. So I've sort of spread out. I'm surrounded by blush-colored stuff on three sides. And I just wanted to sort of share with you my thought process, show some stuff that I found, and so on and so on. So you may have seen this uh, fabric cluster, no, what, snippet roll, that I uh, put together some time ago, did some couching on, like to hold these fibers down. This uh, looks pretty good. Uh, there's also, of course, the machine stitching that was on there to hold it all together. But it needs to be zhuzhed up a bit. So, um, you know, we can think that we have something ready to go and then find out that it is not, that it needs more. So if you're making a note of <laughs> reminders or lessons or things to be aware of, maybe that's point number one. Now off to the side here, but maybe I could pull it in for a second. Are th I've sort of made a sewing pile because frankly, if I'm going to uh, set up my sewing machine and, and uh, change the thread and bobbin and so on, it need, you know it needs it makes sense to make it worthwhile. Um, oh, I know why I have that here. So I have uh, and this you know this isn't going to be new to you, I don't think. Uh, unless you're new, and if you are, welcome, and don't be discouraged, don't be overwhelmed, <coughs> um, and don't believe that everything that I or anyone else tells you. There are many ways to to get to the final destination, and I know that even for myself, I change my process from time to time or from journal to project to project. So uh, in this case, what I'll be showing you are some of the papers that I've sort of tentatively put together for signatures, and none of them have been sewn in, sewn in yet. I'll show you some cover ideas. And so basically, if you're a beginner, there are sort of two ways to approach this select your papers, sew them into the journal, decorate then. The other, and that has, I guess that's both good 
and bad. You know, there's an upside and a downside to every decision we make. Um, and not only with, with journal making, but, you know, in life. Marry the guy or not. Move to another city or not. Take that job or not. You, you know, you get the idea. Anyway, the other approach is to select your pages but keep them loose so that you can do additional things to them, like sew trim on, maybe sew fabric on, um, easier access if you want to do some rubber stamping or something like that. So on my sewing pile are a couple of these pages off or pieces of um, gift wrap, and I'll sew around them, either top and bottom, so I would have... Um, these side pockets. So imagine this has been sewn and it would then be folded in half and become a signature page. Um, so two options. So top and bottom have access from the sides or sew the sides, no, three sides, and have access from the top. So that's on the sewing pile. Now at some point I must have avocado dyed this white strip of um, or is this, could this have been bias tape? Yeah, this is bias tape. You can tell by that connection. So I must have dyed it while it was still folded because you can see it have this sort of, um, it took the dye differently depended, depending on how it was folded. So I think that's going to make a kind of a unique looking ruffle. So that I've got a couple of other just ordinary shorter strips that can be sewn into ruffles. Um, this is awful, but the other side is better. It's just sort of a light pinkish. Um, so, and there's this too. Mind you, these are sort of cardstock weights. So I was initially thinking about sewing paper ruffles. But that might be a bit uh, too thick. So I'll, I'll revisit that. The other thing I did, I found these beautiful um, floral images, but they were, um, I think they might have come out of one of those day book type things. So I just glued um, some, you know, ordinary copy paper to the back without getting too close to the edge. At least I don't think I did. Yeah, and I will sew around these just for an added little dimension. And the other thing I did, like I had, let me show you. These were, na this was a napkin, I believe. So it had this little uh, kind of, I don't know, what, what do you call that? It's not a serged edge, but it's kind of an embroidered edge. So I cut off the, the focal point that I wanted. Okay, I'll show you. This is another one. So this one is still intact. I'd cut that off, obviously. And of course, I'm not about to throw the, um, the edging away. So I, um, I have these pieces that I'll do something with. But I also decided that I had this card piece of cardstock, and it's lovely on both sides, but here's a quote. So I just glued part of that onto the back of here. And again, just to, this will, this will end up being a pocket, but it's probably too wide, three, six and a half inches. Yeah, so it'll either be a side, th I'm not cutting it down or anything at this point. Mind you, I should make the decision because I would, if I'm putting this in the sewing machine, obviously I'm going to sew around all four sides, not just along the top. So that's on the sewing pile as well. Um, and perhaps that is it for that. So I'll put that out of the way. So obviously these sorts of things are good. Now, I had also, I 
sure I probably showed you this before. Some of these uh, trims and so on that I want to use are now front and center here, so I don't forget to use them. Uh, one of the things that I did last night while I was watching some videos on YouTube, I'd been away all day, so you know, it's always playing catch up when you get home. Maybe dealing with some purchases, watching videos, answering um, comments on my channel, watching other people's videos, and uh, commenting on their videos. Because I have to say that um, one of the things that really makes a big deal of difference, uh, here is more of that, um, to all of us with channels is if you comment. And it doesn't have, you don't have to write your life story and you don't have to do a novella, um, but just some feedback to sort of self identify that you're out there, that you've seen it, and that you like it. So, you can see, I mean, I haven't, I've hardly shown you anything, and there is so much <laughs> of it. But that's part of this um, getting your head around what you have to work with and doing it in an efficient, systematic, creative way. So I had little uh, scraps of uh, fabric. I don't know if you remember... This was a little teeny tiny, this was the flouncy part of a little teeny tiny dress. And I mean, it's gorgeous. It's it's quite sheer. It's got those pale pink flowers embroidered on it. So by having it here in my face, it's a reminder to use it. This is um, eyelet that I obviously avocado dyed at some point in the past. This, I think, I have another chunk here. I think this was a sling, you know, a first aid sling for when you hurt your arm. So this is avocado dyed as well. Now this color may be veering a bit away from what I'm doing, but we'll see. Sometimes in order to make an impact, you need... Um, you need lighter, medium, darker things to get some punch. Um, this is, oh, and as if there wasn't enough stuff to save and keep track of, I'm also saving fibers. Um, this is cheesecloth that has also, was also dyed way back when. So again, this is all kind of staying near me. When I was, uh, oh, I'm in the process of trying to sort my ribbons and trims, I came across this. Now, this color is going to work as well, but again, only if I remember to use it. So that's nearby. This, I don't know if it'll get used or not. That's a pretty high contrast butterfly there, but for now, it is still near me, near the pink blush doilies um oh i started to show you this so i was dealing with these different fabrics i had this is part of a little fabric bundle that i bought way back when at a garage sale a couple you can see that there were coordinated items if you saw my oh maybe it hasn't aired yet i have a video um coming up any day now about my mini and micro mini journals. And you'll see that there are several that were sort of covered with this type of uh, colorway fabric out of those little quilt things. Anyway, so because I'm handling all this stuff, I had some white muslin, I had some of this, I had um, this with the hearts on it, um, so I just started layering things and sometimes the pieces are, you know, they're almost microscopic, but you kind of want to use them. And I also decided that I think that because there's so much lusciousness here that I can go 
maybe a wee bit overboard. And that isn't really my style, but perhaps it could be. How would I know if I haven't really tried that? You know, where there's just so much, probably too, too tiny to rip, but am I gonna throw this thing in the garbage? Not likely. Uh, so I'm sure there will be more snippets made, but those are the ones that I've sort of um, put together last night as I was gathering up uh, scraps. Maybe this will go on here. And for now, I've just pinned them together. This bit here, again, nothing, whoops, nothing really goes to waste. I have been, well, you have to imagine this. I must have, you know, when you have, when you have gathered ribbon, there's always this bit of netting that sort of holds it all together. Sometimes if I'm uh, <laughs> maybe a glutton for punishment or can't wrap my head around anything else, I will remove the stitching and, um, you know, deconstruct it that way. Other times, if I'm in a hurry or thinking, oh, come on, woman, there's better things you can do with your time, I just cut it off. So yesterday, and I've been handling that for a while, so because I liked it. Um, so yesterday, I basically took that apart, finally, and I'm just layering these little bits of stuff here. And I'm trusting, I mean, it's a safe bet as far as I'm concerned, but I'm trusting that combining all of these things is going to work because um, there is that relationship between the colors. So if, like, the way, the way my head works, doing this, like, hanging on to these, putting them together, um, and setting, keeping them together is kind of a good idea. Now, are they done? No, they're not. I will probably hand sew them. And I will, one thing I haven't done so far is pull out my buttons to see if there are any buttons, um, or even beads for that matter. I don't use my beads nearly enough. So, that's another reminder of what needs to happen. Way back when, and I may have shown you this before. Oh, I have this, this clip holding together some ruffles. Now, I don't know if I might have done this on the one and only time I've sewn on camera. But I pulled these things together. So here's, here's how long a ruffle um, you get with a package of bias tape. Like the way that turned out, and obviously it's a nice long thing. Um, this is a fabric that obviously has the colors that I'm working with. Another piece of that. This was something, obviously, that was just avocado dyed. So I'm kind of just, again, to avoid losing anything or, or having an uncontrollable mess. Let me double this up because it's the longest thing here. I'm just keeping these things clipped together for the time being. So that way, if I am looking for a ruffle, then I know I only have to look in one place because they're all together. I'm not going to finish the project and then realize, oh, there was another one hiding somewhere. Now this is an early snippet roll that I did. Um, coffee or tea dyed muslin. I obviously, uh, I used some fabric there, that long strip, this sort of browny pinky thing. I used these little squares that I had stamped on. And again, that stamping is 
really quite pathetic, but maybe it maybe it reinforces that um, sort of shabby chic grungy look. Added a bead. What is this? I guess that's yeah. I added a couple of beads, hand sewed those on, hand sewed those couple of buttons on. No, I've had this probably for three years. So guess what? It's getting used. So I'm keeping that with this. Now, in a perfect world or in a gigantic uh, crafting space, you know, a person would maybe have access to a, an eight foot, uh, oh, here's more of that stuff I was talking about. Maybe a person would have an eight foot long, like a banquet table, sort of. And, um, you know, just spread things out and make nice, neat piles. I don't have the luxury of that. I <laughs> thought I would. I have, you know, some big enough pieces of furniture in here. Oh, see, this is what I was talking about. The two parts to that. So I'll continue to work on, use up these bits one way or another. Here's the placket with the buttonholes from that little dress. Somewhere, okay, here's, here are the two cap sleeves. <laughs> So obviously I could cut these open and see what I really have here. Now obviously there is the um, the hemmed edge or the finished edge. So I could, well, why don't I just do it? I, uh, Kim Newberg uh, did a really nice, uh, well, I mean, I think she's doing a whole series. Whoa. So that was obviously a point of wear. And it just went on in its own direction. And, you know. Anyway, uh, making flowers using um, strips of fabric. So I've got a few pieces ready to give that a whirl. Well, since this has torn there, I guess I better cut it. So... You know, this can be the base of a snippet. Um, because again, if I don't use this now, when am I going to use it? So we'll cut that little seam off. Um, might as well do the same to this sleeve. See if this one tears any better. So maybe these will end up being, uh, now mind you, they could be, maybe they're too small for Kim's idea. We'll see. I'll practice on, or I'll start out with some um, longer pieces and see. The nice thing about this is that it frays quite nicely. I'm just afraid it wants again it wants to cut and it wants to go in its own direction. So this could be added, you know, this could be gathered up a bit, added to decorate a page or whatever. So obviously when I rip this off something, this is all part of the dress. It was not cut straight because here it's you know, five eighths of an inch here, it's an inch and a half. So that might be flower fodder as well. Um, let me put that aside. The, oh, this is the part where the, this was would have been the yoke part, the back where the buttons were. And I have more pieces like this that need to be used up. So Again, a bigger piece like, for instance, this, well, this is too big. So maybe if this was cut in half or even in quarters, uh, let's do it. What are we, what are we waiting for? See if this tears straight. Relatively. This could be the start of a fabric flip. So again, there, there is no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. 
I mean, I guess, no, that, let me take that back. Of course there is, because I'm not, uh, I'm not an airhead, uh, or a space cadet. There is, see, I almost threw that out. That's a good thing. I mean, not throwing it out, keeping it. So, depending on the length or the height of my page, this could be, you know, the bottom layer for a fabric flip. Here's another bit of that, but maybe this one was, well, <laughs> see, <laughs> crazy, couldn't throw it out. Um, anyway, I was saying that sometimes you just have to deal decisively with what is in front of you. Now, because I was working on this last night and had this stuff all spread out, I thought, well, you know what? I could spend 20 minutes um, getting organized, cleaning up my surface, prepping for a video. But you deserve to see the, the truth, the reality of the situation. You know, if I end up with... Okay, this is a big enough piece that I will put aside. I'll fold it up. The Marie Kondo, let me show you the Marie Kondo way of folding stuff. Now this is what you would do, um, or this is what I've adapted from what she says for my uh, fabric scraps. So whether they're little or whether they're, you know, two yards. So to make as neat a bundle as you can you might want to turn in both uh, sort of raw edges then you fold over so that you're you know you're meeting in the middle here now isn't this a much better way especially if you if you file them standing up uh, you've got this much showing as a reminder to what you have uh, oh, let me just show you. Oh. So I've got all these little, these little slices <laughs> of fabric. And you can see, like, this is a pillowcase. This is, some of these things are big. And it also works with some of this bigger, flatter lace. Although, well, I guess, no, that's misleading. Uh, lace is obviously just kind of a flat roll. Um, anyway, that's what I'm talking about. So I've got one, two. Now this thread is kind of annoying, so I'm going to throw this out. Do I want, at this point, I'm probably going to keep these two side seams intact. This is a longer piece. This is a squarish piece. So maybe what I'll do for the time being, just so I help myself remember what my intention was. Oh, maybe I'll group these things all together. And that way, oh, hopefully... She'll say to herself, oh, fabric flip. <laughs> uh, what's that? Okay. Well, that's just plain. This is obviously something I dyed as well. But isn't it great? Isn't it great? So maybe, now there might not be enough contrast here. Just to get some semblance of order, I'm going to put a clip on all of this and hold it together. Again, as a reminder to deal with this all together. Um, oh, I should show you this as well. And then this morning, I thought, oh, what the heck? I, I never looked at my washi tape. And then look it. This is what I found. 
all of these colors could theoretically be used in this journal. Now, I thrifted these. <laughs> I think that they're sort of like um, overall, you know, back in the day when little kids, I don't know, do little kids still wear little overalls? So it's got these teeth. And I'm thinking there's there has to be a way I can use this. So now by spreading out all this washi tape, I can see what I have and I can remember that I'd better use it, or at least some of it. Um, I had some car, a piece of card stock, a six by six, and I thought, okay, probably a bit heavy for a page, but why don't I use one of my stamps and make pre-make a bunch of tabs? So that's what I did. And, you know, it didn't work out exactly, so I still have these left. By pre-making them, I've essentially... Okay, be, uh, before I had that thought, I'd cut along the, the... I'd sort of divided the sheet up. And then I realized, oh, well, maybe this one will work. Not quite. Just barely. So these two strips will have to end up being pocket edging or something. Um, these are tabs, obviously. And maybe there will be others in other cardstock that where I, I want to use it up, but I don't want to... Uh, uh, I don't want the bulk of it being a, I'm just trying to reach a paper clip here. Um, I don't want it to be a thick signature page. So one way to do it is page edging or making tabs or whatever. Another thing I found, and I, I this isn't mine, but obviously it was in something I thrifted, Someone obviously was trying out some stamping on some cardstock, and it looked kind of like a dog's breakfast, to be honest. Uh, not to the point, of course, where he threw it out. But then I just began fussy cutting around them. Now, doesn't that look a heck of a lot better? Well, I guess you have to imagine a dog's breakfast and then this. So these could easily be the basis for... Um, a snippet, no, a cluster, or it could be the focal point on something. But again, I've I've done that that legwork, that homework of um, I wonder if this clip will hold it all together. Of pre-cutting these out so that they're ready to use. Because frankly, the way you know, well, it's the same thing when I. Um, when I, um, pre-stamp stuff, you do it, you do it randomly. You're not paying attention to spacing or whatever, or, or the final use. You just want to get as many images on there as you possibly can. So, um, by fussy cutting them, now they are usable instead of just something that you keep touching and passing around. Okay, so I don't know how long we've been at this already, but I'm going to keep going because I didn't tell you everything I need to tell you yet. Okay, so at some point, well, it would be about a year ago now, I uh, was doing the 100-day project. And I have one of those, I can't see the title from here, but it's that sticker book. Um, and in that, sorry, I guess when I'm too vigorous here, it, it uh, wobbles my setup. Uh, this is like um, a weight, this arm is like a weighted floor base. <laughs> Let me try again. I like to be as accurate and descriptive as I can when I speak. One year for my Christmas list, I asked for 
this arm to hold my camera, my, um, my phone. So it has a weighted bottom. It's really heavy. It seemed like it would be a good height, but it not quite like it would be very close to the action. So it is sitting on a metal um, planter, probably a square metal planter. that's about eight inches tall. So when I, and it's probably, oh, see, that's why every little thing makes it, oh, I better not try doing that. Um, it's touching the table. So when I, touch, when I shake the table, it moves the camera. So I apologize. Anyway, <clears throat> in that sticker book, we know that there are some full page stickers. So I thought, okay, let's just, as one of my 100 day project videos, let's use it. So I clearly had <laughs> this, I don't know, it must have been a box of some kind. Now, again, rookie error, I would say. Who in his right mind, who in her right mind, those aren't inches. Yes, they are. Um, this is one of those rulers from Angela. Two and a half who in his in her right mind leaves a two and a half inch spine? Apparently I do. <clears throat> so sticker, this blushy pink lace, this uh, this um, what do you call these things? Anyway, I've got some string. I've got a little flower here. I've got a butterfly. I've got some vellum. Like I just layered all kinds of stuff here. And I'm thinking, well, I'm wondering about what to use for a journal cover. Is that not a good thing? More stickers and some coordinating stamps here for this belly band. What size is this thing, by the way? I probably made the whole darn thing too big. Well, nine by six. Okay, so thank goodness that part was right. And you may have noticed that I had some stuff clipped to it because as sure as the sun rises in the east, I would have put this someplace and I'd have put this someplace never to be reunited. So here's another full page sticker. <clears throat> this will probably help you know what I'm talking about. That, you know, that botanic book. More lace more pack paper more this must have been the border around these stickers the full page because we're not going to waste that surely and then what have we got in here oh some more fairies some more stamps some more okay this is this kind of stuff i used on the cover So these could be tabs. That was probably my intention. And then I guess I punched these guys out with my 5 8 inch stamp. Okay, so what, <clears throat> what I'll do, I won't make you watch this, but I will add these tabs to the other tabs. I will probably use this stuff up in snippets, so I'll put that with the other bits of fabric. And then these things for now, I'll just put back in the bag, but you know that I will, um, when I come across more stuff like this, I will group it in such a way that it gets used. Okay, <clears throat> so for now, well, I'm putting that aside. I'm still keeping it together. But think, <clears throat> think about this humongous spine. That should be at minimum five signatures, I would say. And that would allow for expansion and so on. 
So, and again, whether these end up being in here or not, I don't know yet. <clears throat> but I'll tell you that this is definitely the sort of spine where you want to go with some of your thicker, heavier elements. So, you may remember... I did a video, and I just love how this turned out. So this is like one of those gauze bags. This is a fussy cut, just off a greeting card. I love these cards so much. The price was so good, I bought all that they had because I love it, and I need to probably fussy cut a few more. But this is essentially a signature page that is also, um, you know, a pocket. So this big fat spine can definitely accommodate that. This is a piece of something that, okay, this was a, a photocopy of a drawing I had done, um, coffee stained. This is one of the napkins out of my Paris uh, bundle. These are, this is, one of the envelopes that just is so gorgeous. <laughs> uh, I worked the federal election. This is a piece of Braille. This was about to be thrown out because, of course, it's not reusable. This was the page off with the sick candidates' names that we had available if there would have been a blind person who needed to be able to know the candidates names so um french and english anyway so there's room for braille this is gift wrap again this is pretty thin stuff but i must have pre-cut these pieces with the intention of using them so i better use them this stationery I have had for decades. Loved it. It's high time it got used, and it fits. Um, this 8.5 by 11 scrapbooking paper, back when they still printed the, the actual name on it, Francis Meyer Incorporated, lignin and acid-free, laser-friendly, um, anyway, this is probably 25 years old. This is, I believe, an envelope that I made. This is, um, some beautiful paper as well. Oh, you know what? This would have been stationary that matched that, um, envelope. So I just made a tall pocket, sewed around three edges, made that notch there as a reminder, made that flap so I have something to sew it into a signature. Oh, you know on my sewing list I have more of the, this to do, so this is the, the way it looks. See, my, my punch wasn't very... Uh, I have to fix that. So top loading pockets... And again, these kind of things were all together. This is heavier weight paper. Uh, probably not a pattern I liked on the inside. So I, I just um, sewed these two together. This is some obviously vintage and discolored uh, gift wrap. I've shown you these napkins before, so this is a reminder to use them. This is off a little notepad that I thrifted not that long ago. Um, you've seen this old gift wrap. Again, got to use it up. Look, it's it has tape marks and marks where the paper got damaged. Okay, what is this? Obviously something that will match more of this gingham. More. <laughs> this is more of that same paper that happens to be the right color. These are pages that I, um, avocado dyed or coffee dyed, tea or coffee dyed. 
this is um, more gift wrap. This is a beautiful piece of, oh, I guess this is a digital of someone's. I better not guess. Somebody else's digital, somebody else's digital. I have oodles and oodles of this paper. So obviously need to use a bunch of those up. And what's this? This is some kind of scrapbooking paper. So this uh, is obviously not enough to fill this journal, mind you. And I wouldn't put all of this in here anyway, but you can see that I'm going to need a lot of papers here. And one of the things, and this is personal preference, one of the things that I have learned about myself and about how I want my product to look in the end is that I would rather go through the extra steps, some might say the extra headache of more signatures, than having oversized, gigantic signatures because those pages aren't going to lie as flat. And I think the, the um, chance for gator mouth just increases with that. So I'll put this aside. <clears throat> When I was um, digging, and this is an unlikely place to find it, but when I was digging for some of my mini books, like I have a whole drawer in, um, you know, those Michaels type drawers. I have, uh, there, maybe it was two years or so ago, I was on this kick of slow stitching. And I knew that I had a lot of fabric in, and I, again, I'm always driven by color. So I started putting together these sort of patchworky type covers. So it's on a base fabric. And then you can see by this how much I've slow stitched. In fact, there is no machine stitching on here. Now I've learned something about doing this. Um... And I have probably uh, maybe six more of these in different colors. But I thought, hey, this maybe is not as, um, you know, maybe in a, if I use this as a cover, I would incorporate more of these colors that are getting closer to um, what we used to call a dusty rose, perhaps. But you can, I hope you can see where I've just highlighted, just done a plain old satin stitch on some of the edges of the petals. I've used running stitch uh, to hold the pieces together in many places. This is just, um, I, I love this, and this is bedding actually. Pillowcases and sheet that has a floral aspect as well as the polka dots. I just used a stitch across uh, some of those circles like where there'd be the highest contrast. This is sheer. So, you know, really wants to unravel. You can see. Um, more satin stitch there. More kind of had to do a blanket stitch or something to keep this from unraveling any further. Blanket stitch. Um, yeah. Yeah. What is holding this edge together? Oh, nothing at this point. So I guess the assumption was that I'd be sewing around or zigzagging around. So this obviously needs to be a cover. So some of the pages that I tucked in here for the time being, I don't know if I've turned this into a digital yet, but I, I certainly could or should. This was a lace master board that I had done. So I just printed this a couple of times. Um, you've seen that, that, okay, this is different designs in that same pad. So we know that these all color coordinate. And again, maybe they, they're not the right ones for this cover, but for now they are there. Um, oh, this is just a pretty big, well, probably too big envelope. More of that gift wrap that, you know, now I finally have to use. Look at how it's discolored 
you know, based on how much uh, sunlight it got. These beautiful doilies. You've seen this before. You've seen this before. This is other gift wrap that, you know, could work. So I guess to maximize it or maybe to strengthen it, I kept these really <clears throat> uh, deep pockets. Actually, let me add that to my sewing pile. And this <clears throat> was an altered envelope. Um, which would get sewn in here and would be denied. No, it's just all decorated. So I think I was intending this just to be writing spots with all these large expanses here. Now wet, and I used uh, some stamped images and my own carved st uh, stamps there. So this needs to be sewn in. Now mind you, maybe I should put this with the, the big, the jumbo spine. So... For now, I have that tucked into there. Oh, I should also show you this. This is just a bag of other odds and ends that I mustn't forget to use. Maybe I'll add this to my little box over here. You know, even finding the right um, container to store this stuff in when you're using it. So ribbon roses. Then these beautiful little guys, like, are these not precious? And if I don't use them, please start a petition and make me, make me do it. Because what am I saving them for? This is the perfect project. So a bunch of those, this is a bow off, probably some stationery. Here is, oh, I just cut this off. I found this other roll of other package of bias tape maybe it's well could be off the same yeah it probably is but why would that anyway i was gonna say why would this be brighter anyway who the heck knows now these i'm not sure where i got them from i don't think i know i didn't do this Yeah, so somebody had cut a bunch of uh, hexagons and then covered them with fabric that just happens to work with my plan here. Especially love these florals. So I need to use these. Hey, let, let me just try something out here. Mm, which one? Probably too big for these, but maybe this works with the fabric flips. Anyway, so I'm tucking those in here. Oh, I have to show you this idea. That will be a diff. That'll be a standalone video, I think. But again, strips and odds and ends and odd sized pieces and a little bit of ribbon. Why don't I just make a bow out of this? Maybe it's easier to remember to use a bow than a piece of something that is likely to just get... Here's another one. In fact, I could make bows out of all of those things. Again, I'm not trimming this at this point. I mean the tails. I'm not trimming the tails. Um, see, I tend to prefer... Well, the bows I typically make have smaller loops, and um, but I know there's a school of thought out there where, the, you know, you've got these gigantic loops, you know, almost like so, and then you glue it down and you scrunch it up, so we'll see. Um, this is not long enough, I don't believe, for a um, a tie, but it is like the seam or a tore crooked or something. So part of it, anyway, I obviously have to use this because it's beautiful 
as is this. So this is something that I tore and you can see it's it was again not cut straight. So how that gets used I'm not sure yet but I guess I better keep it with my smaller scraps here. Um, okay so as I'm dealing with some of these papers of course I'm also finding some itty bitty ones. So I began folding them. First of all, you can see these are cutoffs from that wrapping paper. So all I've done so far is fold these in half. Now, if I end up making a teeny tiny little thing, I'd tear this in half again and fold them and that would be that would be the size of my page. So at this point I'm keeping my options open. Um, these are kind of lopsided, but then I thought, okay, maybe I don't have to have everything so, you know, squared off and meticulous. So let's just, this one is really. So then I don't know where this paper came from, but it's lovely. So I thought, okay, I could sew it in here. Then I've got this flip out. This is some of that note paper I showed you earlier. This was another scrap of some kind. This is a piece of something. This is a cardstock. These are little itty bitty pieces, I think, of digitals. Now, this is um, drawer liner, and it's still scented. So, I really should be looking through my signature drawer, the drawer, filing cabinet drawers drawers, plural, where I keep folded signatures and see if I have any uh, in eight and a half by 11. So again, this is just kind of oddball folds here as a reminder to myself that everything doesn't have to always be folded up into just into halves. Okay, what's this? Just a little note paper or a little thing that came with some mulberry paper. And then what is this? This is an old book page. The colors aren't quite right, but anyway, for the time being, we're going to hold all this together. And no doubt there will be other pieces that will uh, get added to this. So... You think that's all. No, that's not all. I'm also keeping together for the time being. This is all cardstock that could, would, <clears throat> excuse me, work. Um, I probably, except maybe in the big fat spine book, probably will not use as signature pages. Now these are stickers, kind of juvenile stickers perhaps, um, but some could definitely be used here. I should actually go through them and figure out which can be used and which are just too, too you know, juvenile for my taste. Um, I won't do that now, but that is another, oh, let me put aside that with my other homework. So I guess it'll be a gigantic clip like that. Now, part of what was in that bundle is, of course, the cover off the paper packs. So what do I do with this? Does this become... A cover for a little booklet that get gets tucked into a pocket and then just cover that up with something. Do I fussy cut all of these little sample sheets out and treat them like twinchies and use them in some way? Do I cut this off 
make it turn it into a journaling card. Well, let me just do it like so, so you can see. Um, that obviously gets covered with something. Oopsie. <laughs> we have a plan. Or do we want the darker one? Maybe we want a little contrast. So, and then we'd have to cover that up because we're not going to cut the, the antenna off the butterfly. So maybe I want to, I don't have my knife here, but I can, oh, there are lines on here. I can easily, how big is this? I don't really like this cutting board, uh, mat, I mean this cutting mat, because we want four and a half. So I'll, just to be on the safe side, maybe I'll cut it by this lignin part here. Um, because it doesn't have quarter inches, and sometimes you want that. Okay, so I, well, I'm going to do cutting on this. This I'm going to clip together as a reminder to glue this onto there. And who cares if it is not the same shape as the thing underneath? It doesn't matter. And then I'll figure out some other, okay, how wide is this now? One, two, three, four and a half. So I don't know what it'll be. I will cover that up with something though. Um, I don't know where to put it. This needs to work, this needs work. So for the time being, I will just clip these things back together. Um, more doilies staying front and center so I remember to use them. More of this paper to back stuff with. More of these, uh, these feel so great these oversized pages you can see how huge that is that could be signature pages if necessary um, or could be more backing paper and um, for me you know there are those those slotted type things and they come you know solid or wire or plastic or metal um those those sorting things those sorting contraptions that allow you to stand things up like this jeez i'm sorry about this table maybe i can just gently move that oh sorry but at least now Okay, now it's just rocking <laughs> in space. But at least now if I move the table. Oh, brother, that's not very much space. Um, anyway, for me, having things standing upright like this is so much easier to see. Here's a bundle of, of wrapping paper. It's going to be easier for me to see and keep track of this than if I made uh, stacks, if that makes any sense. Um, I also have a couple of these El Cheapo um, calendars from Dollar Tree or somewhere. So you can see that there are these, some of these watercolor looking flowers that could easily be part of a collage or a master board or something like that. So I have that nearby. And then this is a folio type thing that's long since come apart. This used to be glued. I've had this probably for 25 or 30 years because I loved it. So, you know, maybe it's time to do something with this as well. 
Or I could just keep it for another five or so years. Just, you know, just for the heck of it. Okay. Um, now, how long have we been at this? Oh, dear, an hour. Um, maybe I've covered a lot of ground here already. I will just do a series of these videos. I mean... You might not see them all in a row. I might not schedule them all in a row. But uh, I do have to get on with this. And once I've spread all this stuff out, I need to work my way through it. Let's just say that um, I'll go and do my homework, my sewing... You know what let's just take a few more minutes and look refresh ourselves as to what kim sent i'll take it all out and maybe we'll start at the bottom okay so there she gave me this i don't need this box here right this second second now this I guess it depends how many journals I end up doing. This would be great to use as is, you know, just cut it down to the right size because it's good inside and out. Okay, I'm going to, I'm putting this aside as a cover potential. She sent me these beautiful cards. She said she couldn't use them. She couldn't bear to use them. <laughs> I don't know if she thought I have more. Oh, I'm more vicious and can do it. Um, this. And this. Okay, I'm going to put anything that is a potential cover together and <laughs> remember this okay that is clearly an embellishment this is lovely but it won't be a cover so we'll put that there this is a tie um, a tie off something you know a belt self belt Let's use, put that aside. Then, okay, here's another quilt piece. So that's going with the cover potential. Then there's this gorgeous bark cloth. And if you saw, and I don't know if it's sold yet or not, but she did a flip through of a journal that was for sale. And of course, I recognize this fabric. So, um, yeah, check out her coffee shop. Maybe it's still there. And and actually, it was during that flip through that she pointed out that she almost never has journals for sale as such. So it is, um, you know, scarce as hands teeth, shall we say. But I do love this. Anyway, so that's going on the potential cover pile. Whoopsie. This is also gorgeous. This is like a cotton. So this may be more likely would be used for, mind you, it could be a cover, but it could also, let me just do that right this minute. I'm not without even measuring. I'm going to just randomly, well, I guess I should measure. That's just reckless not to measure. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but let's say, let's give it a little extra in case this goes crooked. So I'm doing that at 12. And I'm ripping that. And I do this quite often when I want to deal with something. Yeah. 
No, I'm not going to fold it Marie Kondo style because this could be a cover as well. But this now goes, because it's an oddball shape, it now goes into the pile of stuff that could become a... Um, um, you know, fabric, a uh, cluster or a fabric flip or something like that. Now this is beautiful. I don't know that, mind you, it could be part, okay, it's going with the fabric flip part. This is beautiful. And this is, you know, this is a piece of clothing. Because of the way it was hemmed, you can just tell. I think Kim is a master at uh, salvaging more of uh, this is obviously her version this is this would be tea dyed I suspect um, eyelet and then this gorgeous piece now this could very well be a hey and I didn't even dig out one other potential <laughs> mind you do I want to use something that gorgeous on a cardboard cover I don't know that would be a hard one I think I think I might prefer this on a fabric cover but anyway okay we'll keep that nearby uh, tassels. I do have a place for tassels, but for now I better keep it together. Some velvet ribbon. So this could be uh, put with my cluster pile. This thing is still shedding a bit, so... And this has to get used because it's too gorgeous. So I'll put that, okay, let's put these two guys together. Now those colors are not, you know what I mean. Oh, that's the note. <laughs> I think I told you that. She wrote this note on the adding machine tape. Is that not clever? And this is so gorgeous. So let's put those trims together. This could easily be part of the sleeve. Well, we have to do that ruffle separately. Okay, I'm getting this. Okay, let's put this fancy stuff here. This could be part of clusters as well. This is some more trim. So let's put it with the bundles of trim that I have. Let's put these tassels in the box for the time being. This sheer ribbon. And Kim is also famous for um, ironing everything. So she's kind of a girl after my own heart. Oh, and another thing I want to remember to use are these Nuvo drops. Okay, I'm keeping these things together as a reminder. And then, oh, I should think, yeah, I showed you that. That sleeve needs some work. And then a bunch of beads. So clearly I need to do some bead work, which I don't do often enough. Anyway, okay, I'm stopping there because I, I don't know about you, but I have homework. And I bet you, I bet you, you do too. So why don't we each go and do some homework and then reconvene when I have, uh, oh, and here's this altered paper clip. We'll throw it in that little box. Uh, when I have more some of this stuff done and can show you the next phase. Um, does that sound like a plan? I hope so. I'll be back and I hope you will too. Thanks guys. Bye.